there were these sports journalists and they had a new piece of equipment to cover the Olympics, which was this live satellite feed camera. And it was never intended that this camera, a thing, I don't think anyone created that camera imagining it to cover a hostage crisis. And they turned it onto this crisis and now it's something we're all very familiar with. Having a common story of this happened, then this happened, then this happened, from which we can have different points of view, is essential. Well, if we're telling us, making the story about these guys trying to get the story in an accurate way, we have to do it in an as accurate a way as actors. Also, it's being intercut with documentary footage, so we kind of have to look like we're in the same world. So, you know, a lot of that equipment works in that room, all that analog equipment. We're hitting the controls that you should be hitting. Um, and that, that was very, very important to him, the physical reality. The room is the size the room was, even though it would be easier if we made it bigger to film in. Um, and there's two cameras in there going with, you know, three people operating each camera and all those actors. So we're in a kind of soup together. And I think it created our own intense reality. We filmed all day long, every scene from beginning to end, even if it was only for a little part in the middle. And um, it was exhausting. It was like a sporting event. <laughs> It was a lovely together ensemble uh, feeling, which credit to the actors and credit to the director um, and casting director and just a, yeah, a really unusually, I don't know what you, what you say, friendly group of actors that, you know, stuck in a room like that, it's kind of sink or swim, you, it's got to be like that or it's going to be really unpleasant. So it was just, um, especially with the material, the heavy story, so um, yeah, just a, just a joy to do, real privilege, feel very lucky to be part of this. Mariana Gebhardt is a character, she's an amalgamation of um, several people they came across in, in their research, Tim Fierbao, my director, and Moritz Binder, the, the writer. So she didn't actually exist. I, what, I, what I love about the way they, they wrote this character is that it is actually the woman that gets to go and do the do all the work, because that's usually how it is and we don't see it, so I like that they paid tribute to that but yeah it was fun I got to drive in a in a car from 1972 was a bit nervous about that because I had not driven a car in a couple of years but everything worked out <laughs> it was the first time that um, a camera a live camera was pointed at a tragic event unfolding as opposed to a uh, sports you know um, and I think that has a lot to do with the way we consume and uh, news these days as an audience we are in the room with these sports journalists who all of a sudden have to make um, decisions on how to report on news um, yeah it's a fun challenge on the, September 5, 1972, there was like something happening that never happened before. It was like a news coverage of uh, live coverage of an event like like that never happened before. And uh, you have to remember that those people were mainly sports journalists doing this, experts in in live coverage, and uh, they achieved something that day that has never been done before. The director Tim and I, we really dug deep into research, we read a lot of police files that only was available by that time, they weren't available before, um, to get the events right, and um, we read a lot of books like biographies by Ruan Arledge and Jim McKay and, and uh, a lot of like scientific uh, books about that event, and then we had like this main source, Jeffrey Mason, the real Jeffrey Mason. Uh, and he took us through that day like over and over again more and more detailed with every meeting and that was like such a gift to have him on our side. And this is like a dream come true and like walking through a dream. I, we, we would never have expected something like this happening and and seeing how the, the movie is received and, and how people react to it. I mean this is like a dream come true. We try to recreate this feeling, first of all, and that's why we built, uh, we had like a tiny soundstage and we uh, had the original blueprints of, of the soundstage back then and we tried to really recreate the rooms 
uh, without moving walls, so it was really a tight space for all the actors and the cameras and everything, everyone to work in. Um, and I think that may that is part of why it feels so intense and authentic. To make it a thriller, like to really get the feeling, you know, of the of the people that were just they had to deal with something for, like this for for the first time, basically, and they didn't know what they will end up with, and they didn't know really what they're doing um, and they really tried their best and so uh, we wanted to you know make the audience feel that adrenaline um, and this rush that are that they are going through in our story is entirely told from the perspective of the abc sports broadcasters that they had to make the switch from reporting on the olympics to reporting on that crisis during that tragic day in munich we had a conversation with the, with the real Jeffrey Mason, the character that John Magaro played, and we interviewed him on that day and what they went through, and all of that, listening to his stories and what he told us, what they went through, and, and what challenges they faced when they were making that sports from, from uh, that switch from sports to, to, to that crisis reporting, that seemed a really interesting premise for a movie to us. The interesting thing about Munich 72 maybe compared to a classical newsroom drama or so or what is very specific about that case is that it wasn't a group of journalists that were experienced or trained to report on a tragic situation like this. It was, as I said, like a bunch of, of sports people and in a way they had an almost innocent view on these questions that you get confronted with when you report on a crisis like this, these ethical questions. And this is what we are exploring and, and we hope that for today's audience, especially for today's audience, like today everybody has a camera and a TV in their pocket, it would be interesting to, to take a step back and see how a little bit more than 50 years ago a situation like this was on live television for the first time because it was actually also the first Olympics that was globally broadcast live.